Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor, for those updates. I'm happy to be back again this week. I want to start off by saying that things continue to get better, and I remain cautiously optimistic. In fact, Rhode Island is in a very good place. Still have some work to do, but we're in a very good place, and I can see a path forward. Our weekly percent positive is down to 1.6 percent, and that's down from 1.9 the previous week. And in fact, yesterday, I was just notified, our percent positivity is 1.1 percent. So we're definitely in a good place. It's trending in the right direction. Good news to be optimistic. Our case numbers, which were elevated from the end of March through early April, uh, have been coming down steadily since that time. We're still identifying approximately 200 new cases a day, but it's not that 500 cases that we were identifying five or six weeks ago. So again, good news. And one of the reasons for this is that we have been making so much progress uh, because of our highly effective vaccines. And that's something the governor emphasized, it's something that Tom will talk about. But again, these vaccines are highly effective and they are safe. You can see evidence of this in every population that we have vaccinated so far. For example, Dr. Alexander Scott had talked a lot about the declines that we'd seen in the, in the cases and hospitalizations and deaths among people who live in congregate care set settings. Obviously, that setting had been very hard hit by this pandemic, and we have seen significant decreases in cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. More recently, we've gone to more than 90% of Rhode Island teachers vaccinated. Obviously, a success, and that has contributed to a significant decline in that population uh, among COVID cases. So every population that we have vaccinated that has high rates of vaccination, we have seen significant decreases in everything that we measure. We've also started seeing that decline at a time when we're seeing a bump in cases among students, a population that wasn't getting vaccinated um, at the end of March. And so what we're seeing among teachers for sure is a, vac is a vaccine effect. And we're fortunate, and this is something that I don't take for granted uh, every day, is that we have an ample supply of vaccines. We're in a good place. In the past few months, we've been in a little bit of a difficult place. Uh, the demand for vaccines, which we've been thrilled about, has really outpaced supply. But we're moving to that point where we now have ample supply. And that's not the case for many parts of the world. I'm thinking about Brazil. I'm thinking about India. You know, incredible human crisis uh, in those areas. So we are lucky to be in this country with the vaccines that we have, which are effective. And we're also fortunate, too, because a lot of the emerging variants, which the governor touched on, are more infectious uh, and potentially can be a little bit more deadly. And those are now circulating here in Rhode Island, but we're lucky that the vaccines are effective against that. And as an example of this, at this very time, if you are 75 years of age and older in Rhode Island and you get COVID and you are not vaccinated, you have a 50% chance of being hospitalized. Again, one in every two people who's 75 years of age or older and who is not vaccinated are going to end up in the hospital after getting COVID-19. So if you're an older adult who has not been vaccinated, please, please, please consider getting vaccinated to keep yourself safe at home and out of the hospital, even if you do get COVID. And as Dr. Alexander Scott has shared in the past, it's important to get vaccinated even if you have already tested positive for COVID-19 a few weeks ago, a few months ago, uh, et cetera. If you've had COVID-19, your body may not always mount a strong immune response that's needed to fight off another COVID infection. And so it's important to get vaccinated. And we know that vaccines lead to very strong protection. When we get vaccinated, we are protecting not only ourselves, we're also protecting the people around us, including our children. And we know that children under the age of 16 cannot be vaccinated yet. Myself, I have a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old. And one of the reasons I got vaccinated, of course, among many, was to protect them because they cannot be vaccinated. And this is also one reason why here in Rhode Island and across the country, we're seeing a greater proportion of cases uh, among children. While we're not seeing a lot of transmission in schools, the proportion of our cases among children has definitely gone up. The same is true across the country. Nationally, children, children now count for 22% of all COVID-19 cases, and that's compared to about 3% a year ago. So some degree of caution is still warranted, especially uh, as we look to push out vaccines. And on that note, that is going to be one big news uh, probably next week when the FDA uh, is going to vote on EUA authorization of the Pfizer vaccine for children 12 to 15 years of age. And that's exciting news. And we expect that the vaccine may also be authorized for younger children by this fall. And Pfizer has mentioned potentially uh, in the month of September. 
I've already had the discussion with my daughter, who's uh, 13, 13 going on 16 at this point, but we've talked about it, and she wants to get vaccinated, and I'm excited to get my kids vaccinated when the time uh, rises. So again, we have reasons to be optimistic, optimistic here in the state of Rhode Island. But that optimism also depends on each of us doing our part. With the things opening up more, we don't want to lose some of the progress we've made. And I'm, again, cautiously optimistic that that won't happen, but we want to continue moving our state, our community in the right direction. And so obviously, get vaccinated. If you haven't been vaccinated, we want to continue to do things outdoors when we can. We want to avoid large crowds whenever possible and to wear your mask when appropriate. And especially uh, remember that mask wearing is mandated here in Rhode Island in public places indoors uh, here in our state. So keep these things in mind on Mother's Day. It's looking like it's gonna be a great day on Sunday, which I'm excited about. If at all possible, of course, consider seeing your family, your loved ones outdoors. If you're inside, wear your mask, protect your loved ones, and that's one of the greatest gifts that you can give to them, to your mom, your grandma, or whoever the special mother is in your life.